It's a double-barreled video. It involves this melted USB power supply. It looks very cheap and nasty. And it involves this non-cheap and nasty device, a little JBL speaker that was being used by Leo. And, well, let me plug this in and uh, we'll attempt to charge it and see what sort of current it draws. So, but not with this, because this went bang. Feel the bass? Yes, I did. I felt the bass when I plugged it in. It exploded quite forcibly, thank you very much. So the gist is that uh, Leo was listening to his music and then the sort of audio went off and uh, he looked over and saw that this was melting. The plastic had sort of malformed. And I'm not sure which came first. This failing and taking that out or vice versa. Uh, this shows a current, charging current of about 0.8 amps which would be fine uh, if it actually put a charge into it and if the thing started working, but it doesn't. It just keeps going on continually, charge, charge, charge all the time. So I get the feeling it's just shunting that power out. I could be wrong. We shall open it and we shall explore. I've left it long enough. I thought that if it was going to have a problem with uh, like the processor crashing, I've left it long enough that occasionally some, when you've left things off for a while, the, the battery will just go so low it resets, but that's not happened. So... Uh, when I first got this, the power supply was apparently still working and I got a USB voltage indicator that's capable of displaying a, a wider range of voltages and I plugged it in and I plugged it into this death adapter which didn't make a good connection so I just m moved it slightly to make a connection. What a bang, seriously. It was definitely GBL grade bass. Bass in my face. So the first thing we're going to do then is we're going to open this up. Fortunately, the uh, tester survived. I shall put that over there in its normal place. So let's pop this open. Knowing these things, it doesn't usually take much effort. And besides, I think it already tried opening with the force of the bang. The wires have blown off completely. Let's get down close to this. The wires have blown off completely. Let's even grab that toasty circuit board because all the evidence has been destroyed. Is that going to come out? It might not come out because it's kind of melted in. Let's try and push it out with this. Yeah, that is kind of melted in there. Let's try a bit of unreasonable force, shall we? Oh, that is really not one to come out. Pliers. Long nose pliers. Very useful tool. Scrunchy, scrunchy. Right, the transformer has actually disintegrated it, uh, is the bit that was most likely getting hot. The transformer is the bit that has been getting hot. So what do we have in here? We have a big sooty skid mark around the main side. There's the main switching transistor there that... Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure if it's going to be working, but certainly everything underneath is sooty. The resistor under there is blown open, it's seen quite a bit of current. Uh, the circuitry, let's take a look at the separation. The separation is doing that thing. that they, they make a big, bold effort at separation under the transformer. And then it gets to the opto-isolator and it's just like, ah, screw the isolation, let's just put all these tracks really close together. So maybe it's actually a good thing that this power supply has blown up. Well, there's another. There's a slight bulge on the output of that, which is also a clue that the output may have been very unstable because... Uh, the capacitor here is domed, suggesting it's uh, it's been failing. The fact that the transformer's got hot enough to melt onto the plastic also makes you wonder about the integrity of the insulation between the windings in that transformer. Maybe we'll just uh, maybe we'll just pop that transformer open right now and take a look. I shall bring in my focal height reference, my trumpy brick. And we'll focus down onto that. Uh, just for those wondering what the Trumpy brick is, it's a, a foam brick that Poundland sold for some inexplicable reason in the run-up to the, sort of the presidential elections in uh, America a while ago. And it's just uh, Poundland does things like that. They have weird party themes that they encourage. Including ones uh, basically with sex toys. Let's not go there. Well, let's go there one day. So here is the transformer with really all the 
tape in it has, because of the heat, has shriveled up. This is tiny. I'm just kind of regretting doing this now because this is a very, very tiny transformer and it's quite hard to see for me. Not so hard to see for you because you have the benefit of high definition. So here is the... I think this is the secondary winding, which is wound so tight into the middle. Yeah, this, that, that'll be the sense winding the outside and these windings are just mushed right up to. There's nothing separating them at all, is there? It's one of those cheap, dodgy power supplies that really has pretty much zero separation. Okay, right, let's get on to the next bit of the device. Okay, so on to the dish of the day, which uh, is the little GBL unit itself. And investigating this, I think, by the look of it, I don't think I can get there. Yeah, this feels rubbery in this case. I get the feeling that it's going to be one of these ones that the grill is put in from one side and just, it's destructive. I've never found a way to get these grills out nicely. I particularly dislike it when it's a uh, oldish vintage equipment and the grill is jammed in. So there's uh, some acoustic foam behind it to give it that black look, presumably just to stop you seeing the little speaker, maybe, I'm not sure. And we have some screws. What type of screws are those? Oh, they're not handy screws. That's that's a bit annoying. Right, one moment. I shall see if I got a screwdriver that fits that. Let's see if my trusty little precision driver set fits. They appear to be small Torx-ish drivers. Let's try this. Nope. This. This fits. That's good. Is it going to reach right down into those other holes, though? That's the question. I hope so. Otherwise, there's going to be a bit of a pause while I try and improvise. I'll just use brute force here. I think that's working. Brute force usually works. I may have to drill down into these. Given the basis that the unit isn't actually working anymore. I don't think I could do any further harm. So I'm wondering if uh, the battery's failed in it or I think given that you know the, the unit is completely dead even when trying to power off USB, I think that there's a chance that something has failed in the circuit board and is basically shunting out and dragging down the sort of USB supply. So that is those four screws out. Let's try and leave this out. There's glue, I can feel glue. Ooh. Okay, there's a fairly beefy little speaker. Let's unplug the speaker. And the speaker has a little base port. But the base port Oh, the base port is just ducted inside this case, so it's just to give it a long, almost like a sort of little bandpass enclosure to give it that extra oomph from the lower frequency notes. Right, so what have we got in here? Can I get further stuff out? Yes, I can. Let's start taking stuff out. Let's see if the lithium battery is all puffed up. There's the little Bluetooth unit. I didn't really explore the, what this was too much. I'm guessing it's a little Bluetooth uh, amplifier. There is the lithium battery, which may or may not be charged. There is a microphone, I guess. Okay, so what do we have? Let's measure the voltage across the lithium cell. The lithium cell has three contacts. Let's see what it's currently showing. My guess is probably zero, perhaps, if it's been in a sort of defective unit that's been drawing a lot of current or something. Dunno. 
Oh, it's 3.38. So it does have a bit of charge in it. So what's happening when I plug this in? Will we plug it in and see? I'm going to get the thermal imaging camera and we'll take a look and see what we can find. Thermal camera is up and running and ready to go. Let's plug this in and see if there's anything significant showing. So I'm going to plug that in there. And then I'm going to look at it through the thermal imaging camera. First thing I'm spotting is I'm seeing a hot spot there. And I'm seeing a couple of hot spots here. Now, there, this isn't something I wouldn't expect because the this looks like the battery charge circuitry because it's in the vicinity of the battery. Could be wrong. Um, that is... What is that temperature? It's showing at around 66 degrees. So let's uh, get in closer and uh, stick a lens in here, one of Christoph's lenses, which should give us greater detail. And if I do that... In the Bluetooth chip, I don't know if you can actually see that there, the little receiver chip, the main chip in it, let's just try and focus down onto that. The main chip in it has got a very hot spot in one corner, about 88 degrees Celsius, which is way too hot for that. So my guess is that the unit is pulling down the power supply. This is what's sinking all the current here, right in this little chip here. Let's uh, zoom back down onto that. Uh, and nudge up a little bit. So there is, there's a concentrated heat spot here, which it feels is very hot. Uh, this transistor's hot, and this little um, chip here, and I'd guess these are to do with the charging circuitry because they're directly in the vicinity of that connector, and it's got the little temperature sensor going back to it. The rest of it's cold. I'd guess that this is the amplifier, so ultimately... Well, it looks like uh, I don't think there's anything else in the back of this. Just a smattering of components. So the culprit here appears to be this is my conclusion here. Um, and the question then is, was it this that going down that actually started shunting the power supply and caused this very incapable little power supply to overheat in the first place? Because uh, these things are, there's very little protection circuitry in them. They're, they're a disaster. Uh, I took that transformer a bit further apart and it is exactly as you'd expect it's got the zero isolation between the windings and also it's got that ridiculous it's they always do that this gross under right undersized capacitor for uh se electrical uh suppression what's supposed to be a class y capacitor but really isn't and then literally sub millimeter separation in the circuit board between the sub main side and the low voltage output and in this case it's to the the closest connections are to the chassis so it, literally if you were holding a phone plugged into this and that insulation failed either in the circuit board or in the windings then the metal case the phone would become live and you wouldn't be able to let go of it there's some terrible videos on the internet let me just grab a phone a, a samsung phone one with, that's all cracked uh, and you see people because it's got a metal body on it you see people charging their phone, next thing you know you see their hand clamped onto it. They can't let go of the phone because the muscles are all being clamped on by the current flowing through their body and it's just like a hand electrode. So I always recommend uh, for your phone, always get one of these clear plastic cases. It's two things. It means that you're not making electrical contact with the, me the metal sides and also if you drop the phone it's going to protect it. So it's always a good idea anyway. But yeah, interest to take that apart. So Leo, you're, uh, it looks like it was the JBL unit may have actually been the primary fault and the cheapy power supply was perhaps the secondary fault. But having said that, I really don't recommend using these. As I've just said, uh, it's not worth the 99p from eBay because they really are just an electrical disaster. And when you've got something fairly expensive plugged into it, it could, you know, it's going to potentially cause a lot more damage than it would have cost to get a decent USB power supply. Besides, these days, uh, a USB, a decent one, uh, is so valuable because you use it to charge all your devices that uh, it's worth getting a decent one. It's a good investment to get a proper, good quality USB power supply. It will charge your phone faster and it will potentially allow you to use the phone in a more stable manner. With these shitty ones, sometimes you get rogue screen input, you know, when it just jitters false input in the screen because of the electrical noise that's coming off these... Um, 
And of course the protection it offers by putting out proper stable 5 volts, which these don't guarantee any stable voltage at all. So it's always a good move to get a decent power supply to power your devices. But there we go. It was certainly interesting seeing inside it. There's not an awful lot. It is largely a name, JBL. A fairly decent but small and cheap speaker. That little base port, so a bit of audio design there, and then just the Bluetooth receiver and what I'm guessing is a little Class D amplifier here from the inductors around it. And uh, then decent uh, charging with uh, what looks like thermal protection for the battery. So not that bad a design, but uh, I'm not sure how much these would cost. Knowing JBL, it'll be quite high. But there we go, an interesting thing to look inside and get to the root of that problem.